Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I am a pair of disembodied hands floating over the Earth. No, this isn't the thing from Adam's family in space. It is Go For Launch Mercury. If you remember, this was a crowdfunding campaign to create uh, an accurate VR flight simulator of the Mercury missions and further. Uh, well, and this is the version 0.31. It's still not fully functional, but there's a lot of things to show you about it. So I figured, why not? We get the usual disclaimers about, hey, make sure you set up your VR system, right? And then everything goes black. And eventually I wake up one morning, have a steak and eggs dinner with lots of coffee and orange juice and find myself inside the Mercury capsule. And doesn't it look, well, it looks pretty good here. So the launch is kind of, you know, mostly automated, but we still have a checklist that we can run through. I will point out the checklist does not include urinating in your spacesuit. It, uh, as Alan Shepard did, that was not, that was an unscripted addition to the checklist out of necessity for biological issues. Okay, so high watt telly to on, beacon switch on, transmit switch is down here and there's two modes here, so I gotta get that. Arm the squibs, auto retro jettison armed and launch control. So now the launch starts. We're actually 10 minutes ahead of schedule compared to the real thing because of course I had a much truncated checklist. It did launch much later than expected in reality. They had several problems in, related to weather and technical hardware, things like that. Now you can also click and get a look outside and I'll be viewing this. I don't know how to move the viewpoint around short of standing up and walking around. But as you can see, the, you know, this is, this is Cape Canaveral or Cape Kennedy, Kennedy Space Center in the 1960s, long before they built all those vehicle assembly buildings and things like that. No, this was the bare bones thing. It's almost like the days before they had modeled these things. Yeah, I can also test my signal lights to check tower jettison, capsule set, start retro sequence, incorrect retro attitude, retro fire, retro, jettison retro, 0.5G, drogue, main deploy, etc. Let's do that. Also, cabin lights. Oh, uh oh, we're going. Let's say one. Bye! Bye! See you guys! Obviously, he didn't do that. He was being a test pilot and reading out all the information. So yeah, while we're going up into space, let's take a look at all the instruments we have. First of all, this thing here, you saw that it had a display earlier. That is my periscope. It's a camera, an optical system that looks outside the spacecraft. It's not actually a camera. It's a projection system. This is my electrical panel down here. Well, it's, it's the electrical control systems. The fuse panel is down here. So you can see DC voltage, uh, current, this is the AC system. So over here we have a cabin environment, so your oxygen and things like that. You can turn off the fan if you like. That, I'm sure that makes a great deal of difference. We have my clock with mission elapsed time, descent, speed, uh, altitude, altimeter here. So we're going up very quickly, passing through 30,000 feet. Obviously, attitude indicators, roll pitch, yaw. This here is my G meter, so you can hear me passing through the, the three G marks soon. Whoa, this is really starting to feel pretty darn heavy. Survival knife, I guess, just in case I needed it. Uh, this is uh, emergency oxygen and stuff like that, and I'm not sure where the the door uh, explosive bolts are. I should probably look for those. And, Make sure I don't hit them. Some nice electrical stuff modeled. Camera there, camera there. Oh, let's see what else. And this strange totem from the future. Almost looks like my hand. Wouldn't it be cool if these things generated the wrong kind of shadow? It'd be weird, I mean. How are we doing? We're getting up into space. We're now go doing four and a half G. All is well. We are leaving Florida behind. Look at that. We'll get a look at that once we get into space. All systems are go. All systems are go. 
So this is the maneuver control system here, and my hands are disappearing for some reason. I'm not sure if I need to fix my lighthouses. Tower jettisoned, totally missed that. And this will now detach. So you can do that manually, presumably in the full game, but this is currently all automated. You can see the retro package on the back there with the little uh, jets to push them apart, and then three retro rockets that will fire later during a test system. So Alan Shepard pushed the rotated it into the uh, into the retro fire attitude, basically pointing it straight backwards. No, uh, it has a checklist here for the different control modes, but I haven't got the joystick hooked up, or at least I've not figured out how to make it work. So if I want manual damped control, I switch it, so you can switch the different modes here. So ACS set, then we can flick these in. Come on, there, that, 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 and, oh, there, so that would be manual mode. Let's switch to fly-by-wire mode. Manual fuel pump, and then finally switch back to that mode. Since we're going to be using the retro soon, let's uh, f turn on the retro heater. Yeah, we're now facing backwards. You can see the periscope working here. Altimeter is basically high and off the charts here. If you want, you can depressurize the cabin. Oh, wrong one. This one. Bad idea. Oh, crap, crap, no! Don't want to kill myself. That would be really bad. Although I am wearing a spacesuit. So obviously all the mission audio is recorded, replicated from NASA. Uh, I'm not sure once you go off script whether you will have that working in any sensible way. This is obviously an early demo. It's version 0.31. Uh, it has come a long way though. Uh, the, the earliest demos didn't have any of these switches working. So this is a big advancement there. We're in retro attitude ready to fire those thrusters. Yeah, you can reach in and or you can lean in and read some of this stuff. Heaters on, gyro cage, ACS select, oh! And then sometimes that happens. It loses tracking on the headset. Gotta be careful about that. Start retro sequence! So we're getting ready to fire the retros. So the retros were three solid rocket motors. They, I believe they would fire for 10 seconds each, and so they staggered the firings by five seconds, which meant uh, the total burn time was 25 seconds, with uh, the middle, or I guess the middle 15 seconds, having twice as many Gs. There, watch the G meter to see if anything useful happens here. Retro 2 is going. Come on, Retro 3. Retro 3, yes! Excellent, I should be able to, like, flip things to fire them. Excellent. Now they're going to detach the retro package, maybe. Okay, three retros have fired. Retro jettison is back to arm. Okay. Jettison it, then. So I could watch this. Go on, get rid of it. I don't need it here. I don't need this dead weight in my trunk. Obviously, they're not listening to me. What is that little spot in the distance there? Is that a UFO? Ooh. Uh, or is it a glitch? I think it's probably just a glitch. Oh, we got bits, we got bits oh, of the Caribbean okay. over there. Oh, I totally missed the retro jettison. Well, whatever. We're on our way down now. We're on our way back to Earth. The retro rocket packet has jettisoned. We're, uh... Well... I see the straps falling away. I heard a noise. <laughs> the cabin pressure thing clearly isn't hooked up because I believe it had should have one third atmospheric pressure, pure oxygen. Again, one of these things. You know, I'm, I'm obviously picking holes in this because, hey, you know, something to talk about. Oh, and the periscope is now closing because we're getting ready for re-entry. So let's watch out as we adjust. Oh. Crap, we're gonna adjust, yes! So we're now set up for re-entry. And we're gonna fall down. Re-entry attitude. Re-entry attitude. 
This is kind of cool. Also, I like I like the look of the shiny Mercury gloves. I'm not sure how accurate these are. I mean, I'm sure Adam Savage would not tell me all about them. Be kind of cool. Let's see what else is going on here. Yeah, this thing just keeps disappearing. That's so uncool. It's so unfair, damn it! So the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to get slowed down by the atmosphere and the 0.5 G meter will come on and that is basically the moment at which I believe the parachute... This has to come on before the parachute fires, right? So there we go. We're now feeling the atmosphere slowing us down and soon we'll actually be seeing some re-entry heating. There we go. Bit of re-entry heating. Bit of... Well, that's not right. Ah, that's close enough. So yeah, this is Go For Launch Mercury. It's still early on in development, but it did make its, uh, make its indie go-go goal. I mean, it's a pretty small amount of money the developer was asking for, and he's done a great amount of work on this. I really like the 3D modeling. I, I like... I also like the fact that you can see all the rivets and stuff in it. The, the Mercury capsules were so... There were such handmade artifacts and everyone was different. Like later ones would have a window here. Anyway, yeah, just thought this would be a great thing to show you and I will be flying it more as more updates come in because I think uh, the Mercury missions were kind of fun, kind of interesting. They were real trailblazers, at least in the American space program. Obviously, the Russians did everything first, but uh, you know, Mercury's kind of cool because they did their own thing. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.